Hey guys, what's going on? What I got here is the Leica Deluxe. Oh yeah. All right, guys, in this quick video, I'm gonna show you how to use this camera. This is for people who just got this camera. They just got it to Leica for the first time. You have no idea how to use it and you're confused and you're like, can someone show me how to use this camera, please? That's what this video is for. Now, normally I do Sony cameras. So if you are a Sony user, you're gonna to wanna to check this video out too because the way this camera works is absolutely awesome. It's one of the most fun cameras I've ever used. I gotta say, it, it, I gotta start reviewing more cameras because I had so much fun using this camera and figuring out how to use it. And now that I know how to use it, it's amazing. All right, first things first, we got an on button right here. We got an on and off button right there. See that toggle? You flip that sucker on, that turns the camera on, all right? That's pretty simple. You gotta take the lens cap off. There's actually a little string here that you can weave through on the lens cap right there. I didn't have, I don't have it hooked up yet, but you can put the string through there and then it goes through this loop here and this way your lens cap will hang from the camera and you won't lose it. I didn't get a chance to put that on yet, but I wanted to make you aware, all right? This is the basic rundown, okay? Check this out, this is how this works. You have on the aperture ring here, the camera has an aperture ring, all right? Aperture is like the eye of the camera. It actually has like a, a diaphragm that opens and closes. That's what the aperture is. And you can manually control that here. Or you can just leave it in auto. See the A there? That's auto. Same thing with the shutter speed. It has an auto button there, see the A? Or you can dial in the shutter speed. Now check this out, when you change the aperture, um, let me just change the, dis there's a display button here. Let me just change it the way the display looks. Change it to this mode here. All right, so now look at the top. See how it says program mode? That's because I have everything set to auto. It's an auto and auto. But if I turn the aperture to like f2.8, let's say, now the camera says, oh, you're using the aperture. You want aperture priority mode. So now the camera's in aperture priority mode. See that? So let me put it back to auto. Now watch what, watch what happens when I change the shutter speed. The camera just changed into shutter priority mode. Pretty cool, right? Now watch when you change the aperture off auto while the shutter is off auto. Oh, look at that. Now I'm in manual mode. That's right, because you're manually controlling the settings. You're taking manual control of the camera. All right, and it's very easy to do with these two dials. Now that's a really powerful feature, a lot of fun. And when in doubt, you could just leave it in auto. Now another cool feature about this camera that I noticed is there's this button here that says A. Now what this button does, you can see it right there, A. When you hit that button, it puts the camera in full auto mode. Notice how there's an A there and it's red. And if you click it, it turns it back off. So now it's in manual mode, now it's in auto mode. So if you're ever in a situation where you don't know how to set the camera and you're confused, but like time isn't a factor, you know what I mean? Like you're running out of time, you're gonna miss the shot, just hit this button. Boom, you're in auto mode. Take the picture, you're good. You're gonna get a great shot. The camera's really smart, it'll do all the settings for you. And then when, it, when, you, you, know, when you have more time, take auto off, and then you can go back and dial in your settings as needed, okay? That is amazing, okay? It really is. Now, let me go over some of these buttons quick. You have the shutter button here. You press that to take the photo, and you press that to focus, okay? And that's the focus lock. If you press it halfway, the focus will lock if it trains on something. And then you press it, and that takes the photo. Now, you can zoom with this toggle here. You can zoom in and out with the toggle, as you can see there, or you can turn the zoom ring. See the zoom ring here? You can also turn that, and that will also zoom the camera if you have it set to zoom. Right now, I don't have it set to zoom, okay? But if you do, it will. Let me put this stuff back to auto, and now it should zoom. See, now it's zooming. But when you have it in manual mode, it actually controls other things, all right? But you can zoom with this. Now, there's also an aspect ratio toggle here. So three by two is standard. That's what most cameras are. That works out to like a four by six format but you can also do 16 by nine if you're doing you know, cinematography and you want the pictures to match up with that. Or you can do one to one, which is a square, and then you got four to three ratio as well. Now on the side here, you have some controls. You got manual focus on the top, all right? Then you got autofocus macro. So that'll give you from three centimeters all the way to infinity, but AF regular without the macro won't focus on macro stuff. So you need to have it on AF with the little flower there for uh, macro shots, okay? And then you can get really close to stuff. Now, going over some, oh, one other button on the top. We have this button here called F. That is a filter button. So when you hit the F button, it brings you into the filter menu. Check this out. You have all these built-in filters and you can shoot raw quality 
using these filters. That is an awesome feature. It's really easy to get to these and it's really easy to pick, you know, which one you want and look at it, play around. A lot of fun there and they put it right on the top for you so it's super easy to get to. You don't have to go through the menu to find this stuff. I really like that feature. And then you have your exposure compensation here. That's what this dial is for. Now what exposure comp is for is if your image is for some reason exposing dark or light, depending on certain conditions, sometimes that happens. Like if there's a light in the scene or something, it might be exposing too dark. You can then just raise the exposure comp to compensate for you know the exposure when it's not to your liking, okay? That's what the exposure comp is for. I use this a lot, especially when shooting water in bright conditions. I'll actually lower the exposure comp a little bit so the highlights of the water don't blow out. A lot of times that'll happen and I'll just underexpose a little bit in those scenarios. If you're shooting in snow, the scene is usually mostly white, so the camera will always underexpose snow. So you're gonna wanna raise that up to at least like plus one when you're shooting in snow and that'll give you a much better exposure. So that's what exposure comps for, and there's a dial right here for that. Really, really nice feature. Now, looking at the back, we have a button for the EVF. If you hit that button, the camera will switch to the EVF when you put your eye to the thing, see that? Or you can press the EVF again, and it'll force the camera to use the EVF only. And then when you press it again, it'll switch back to just the screen. That's what the EVF button's for. Then you got the Wi-Fi button right here. Now that's obviously for Wi-Fi. You can hit that and then you can hook up to your smartphone or tablet and suck the images off. You have the record button here for video. You have autofocus lock and auto exposure lock. So that right now it, by default it's set to exposure lock and that'll basically lock your exposure so you can get your picture where you want it, hold that button down and then you can actually move the camera around and the exposure will not shift. That's another great feature if you have like a really bright element in a scene or something like that that's screwing up your scene. You can use exposure lock for that purpose to help you in those situations, okay? Now looking at a couple other buttons here, we have the quick menu button right here above this turn toggle, all right? And that brings you to this. Now this is basically all your camera features that matter. And if you just go to the right, you can toggle through all of them. And then when you get to your item, you just have to hit either up or down to get into that actual section. So now I'm in the ISO area. Now I can scroll to the left and intelligent ISO and then auto ISO, okay? And then if you go down, it'll put it back on this bottom row, all right? And then you can toggle to auto white balance. You can see there I'm on white balance. But if you wanna to get to the white balance, you gotta go up. And now I'm in the different white balances, you see that? So that's the trick, all right? You go down and up when it comes to that. Now I'm up top, okay? Now I'm on the top part of the quick menu. So in order to get to these settings, I now have to go down. See, now I'm in standard, vivid, natural, and so forth, all right? And then you just hit this center button here on this thumb dial to lock in what you want. But let me go back to the quick menu. I wanna show you a couple more things. This is the movie setting, so you can select what kind of movie you wanna record. Now this is your quality, all right? Your raw format or JPEG format, or you can shoot in both raw and JPEG. Now this is your focus mode, okay? So this is autofocus single shot. Then, whoops, sorry, let me go down. Then you got autofocus flexible and autofocus continuous, okay? So continuous is for shooting moving subjects. Single is for shooting still subjects and flexible is an in-between. It'll try to figure out if the subject's moving or not. I usually use AFS or AFC depending on what I'm shooting. All right, now, depending on what setting you have here, other settings may be grayed out, similar to the Sony in that way. Now, this is your focus point. This is phenomenal. You have so many options with focus points. This is amazing. It's actually more powerful than the Sony cameras. You can do pinpoint one area. You can select a custom area. 49 area, that's average focusing. Then you have tracking. This will lock onto a subject and track it in this mode. And then you have face and eye detection mode, okay? So phenomenal features. I just wanted to show you this pinpoint mode in particular because I thought that was so cool. When you select that, basically what you do is now that you have the pinpoint mode selected, you have to use the thumb dial here in order to change the settings on it more specifically. Like right now we're looking at the pinpoint. So if I focus on something, it's kind of hard because you can't see the screen. Hang on. Here, you know what? Let me just adjust my camera quick. All right, so now I got the camera set. And watch when I pin, see how it brings up like a picture in picture? So you can see exactly what your pinpoint is focused on. That is an awesome feature. Now, if you want to move that, if you want to move that pinpoint focus, you got to use this dial pad here in order to change those settings. So if you hit this button here, see on the left, that's your focus type. 
And now notice how it says AF area. See that right there? And there's a down arrow. If you hit the down arrow, now you can turn this dial here to make it bigger or smaller, and then you could move it around. You see that? It's a little bit confusing at first though, because you might think that from the quick menu you can do this, but you cannot. All right, so I moved it there, and now if you pinpoint, boom, there you go. So let's lock on something, take a photo, like so. All right, so now, like I said, in the quick menu, I have the pinpoint selected, but notice how there's no down arrow. So I can't actually move it around from this menu. So that, that's a little confusing at first. It took me a while to figure that out. And I wanted to make special note of it because I could see you, you know, getting confused by that as well. Uh, to, I had to go to the actual manual to figure that out. I'm like, how do I move that thing around? Well, you have to do it from this toggle here. All right, so you select it and then you just hit the left toggle and now you have AF area, okay? So that's how that works. And then of course you have drive modes. Here, if you hit bot on the bottom here, you have drive mode. So this is where you would set your self timer. If you wanna, you know, make sure the camera has no shake, set it to like two seconds. And then you have auto bracket. That's a great feature for HDR photography and things like that. You got burst mode here. So you can set your burst mode to super high, medium. There's all different options there. Go back to the, uh, oops, sorry, go back there. Yeah, and if you hit down, see now it's how the arrow is pointing up, it says more options. So if you hit up, it'll bring you into the different burst rate modes. You see that? There you have it. And notice how that one's grayed out. It's because I don't have a setting correct. My guess is I probably gotta be in JPEG mode for that, but that's why it's grayed out. So if you see something grayed out, it's just because you have the, a setting not correct for that particular feature, okay? So I'm just gonna hit the back button here, and then you can change your display modes here by hitting the display button. I really like this one, that's the leveler. So you can see if your shot's level and stuff. That's a cool feature. And then this one here shows you all the different settings, which is very nice. So you can see everything at once, and uh, it's a really great informative menu. Now, if you wanna view your pictures, you can just hit this play button right here, just like every other camera pretty much. And then you can scroll. And what I like about this though, is when you zo use the zoom toggle, you can zoom into your photo, and then, but it zooms in like it steps it, like to preset zooms. I really like that. It, it doesn't just zoom forever. It actually presets to given spots. I really like the way it does that. So you get a quick view without wasting too much time. And then you can just scroll around and you can check out all your different images. I took a bunch of test shots today comparing this camera to the RX105. Quite the comparison, let me tell you. One other thing I just wanted to show you is on the bottom here, you just have where your battery goes. Okay, the battery's right here. It's got a little release lever there and it'll slide right out. And then the memory card is right there. Okay, so you just push that and it pops out like so. The only other thing is the flash. Now this thing comes with a flash, but it has a little hot shoe cap here. So you gotta pop this cap off like so. You slide the flash unit on, the one that comes on, it just slides right into the hot shoe and it locks in there. And then you can turn it on. It has an on and off switch. And then when you take the photo, the flash will fire. So that's great for low light. And it's also great when you wanna keep the ISO at a lower level and you wanna freeze the action. So if kids are moving and things like that, the flash is a really good feature. Also up here, you have your stereo microphone. So you wanna make sure you don't put your fingers over that. So that is a quick crash course how-to on how to use the Leica Deluxe. All right, now I'm imagining the Panasonic LX100 is basically the same camera. So if you're using that camera, most likely all of this stuff's gonna be pretty much the same. Now I haven't used that camera myself yet, but just so you know. Oh, sorry, one other thing. Your HDMI ports are over here. If you wanna plug in there and you plug in your USB cable there, to suck the images off to your computer. So you got an HDMI and you have a USB there, okay? So that's what that's about. What a fun camera to use. Unbelievable how fun this is. I love dialing in the aperture and the shutter speed. I was using them both today because I took some water shots. So I was trying to get a slower shutter speed and stuff. So I got to play with all these settings and I was having such a good time, you know? All right, that's pretty much it. So stay tuned. I got another video coming out where I compare this to the Sony RX100. So you can see the differences between the two cameras. They're very different but they're very similar in a lot of ways as well. And be sure to give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, I would really appreciate that. And be sure to subscribe, check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and of course, SonyAlphaLab.com. All right, buddies, take care.